okay so we'll continue with stertorous respiration so what is this stertorous respiration it is a noisy breathing snoring sound are made by the air passing through the secretions as seen in acute alcoholism so in a condition called acute alcoholism people who are alcoholic or drink so this is mainly seen in such patients so what happens in the respiratory tract there will be secretions the phlegm that is found and because of the secretions that is found in the air uh, passage what happens is there is a snoring when the person breathes it will be like a noisy breathing which is snoring sound so why that happens because when there is air entry on the passage because of the phlegm or the secretion that is found the patient will have noisy so snoring sound okay so stertorous it's a noisy breathing snoring sounds which are made by the air passing through the secretions as seen in acute alcoholism next we will see what is strider so strider it is a harsh vibrating shrill sound is produced during respiration as seen in upper airway obstruction example laryngitis so laryngitis is inflammation of the larynx so st strider when we say what is the characteristics of the sound it is a harsh vibrating shrill sound which is produced during respiration seen in upper airway obstruction as in laryngitis next we will go on to rail so what is rail it is an abnormal rattling or bubbling sound caused by the mucus in the air passages as seen in bronchitis or pneumonia so this is seen in case of two conditions bronchitis or pneumonia so in pneumonia is inflammation of the lung bronchitis is the inflammation of the bronchi okay now what happens in rail what is the characteristic of sound it is an abnormal rattling or bubbling sound caused by the mucus in the air passage as seen in bronchitis or pneumonia so in this two condition when we hear two rattling or bubbling sound then the sound is called as rail next we'll go to wheeze what is wheeze wheeze is high pitched musical whistling sound wheeze is high pitched musical whistling sound that occurs with the partial obstruction of the smaller bronchi and bronchioles as seen in asthma so mainly this condition we can see in asthma so how it is it is high pitched like whistling sound when a person whistles okay so you can hear when the patient is breathing patient specially affected with uh, when they are affected with this asthma so how is their breathing breathing is like whistling sound okay high pitched whistling musical okay like it will be sounding like a musical whistling sound so this mainly occurs with partial obstruction of the smaller bronchi and bronchioles as seen in asthma so asthma is again a respiratory disorder okay so in such patients you can actually see that the patient will have high pitch musical whistling sound next we will go to sigh so sigh everybody they do when they are tensed mainly we can see the sigh what is it a very deep inspiration followed by a prolonged expiration so how does it go you know so when we are tensed we do or when we are upset with somebody when we are angry you know we take deep inspiration and prolonged expiration that is called as sigh so frequent sighs are signs of emotional tension next we'll go to air anger now what is this air anger it is a form of dyspnea in which there are deep sighing respiration it is a form of dyspnea in which there are deep sighing respiration so air anger is nothing but when the person is actually having trouble to breathe or when there is oxygen content less you know automatically it leads to dyspnea we have already seen what is dyspnea it is a difficulty in breathing so air anger is a condition where the patient is having dyspnea in which there are deep sighing respiration 
this is how the patient will have when they are having dyspnea so that is called as hair anger next we will see what is chain stokes respiration so it comes we have already seen chain stokes respiration where when we studied apnea absence or cessation of breathing so what happens in this chain stokes respiration it consists of a series of respiration that gradually become deeper and noisier until a climax is reached when a pause occurs then the cycle is repeated an increase in the rate and depth of respiration alternates with the period of apnea so what is this chain stokes respiration in this we will see various series means so many uh, incidents that is happening okay so so many things that is happening for a patient okay now what happens in chain stroke first you will see that the patient it is a series of respiration that will happen that gradually becomes first he will have deeper respiration and then it will become noisy the patient will produce noise while breathing until a particular climax that is until a particular point the patient will have such kind of breathing after which a pause occurs so there it is a series of respiration so patient will start having deeper respiration with noisy respiration until a climax is reached then a pause happens that pause what is pause means stop so the patient will stop breathing so that is apnea okay then after apnea what happens there will be an increase then this this cycle will be repeated what is a cycle first the patient will have series of respiration it will be deeper then noisier then after the climax is reached the patient will pause that is apnea will happen then the cycle will keep repeating okay then an increase in rate and depth of respiration so in chain strokes usually when you see there will be a increased rate of respiration that will happen to the patient okay then alternates with the period of apnea okay so rate will be increased that is depth will be increased then there it will be noisy apnea will reach happen to the patient and again the cycle will be repeating again and again patient will breathe deep breathing will be more noisier then at one point the patient will stop breathing then again the patient will have deep breathing noisier breathing apnea so like this the cycle will be following that is called as chain stokes respiration and next is dyspnea difficulty in breathing next you have cyanosis what is cyanosis it is a bluish discoloration of the skin and mucous membrane and it mainly happens when there is absence or lack of oxygen okay next we will go to anoxia what is anoxia it is the lack of oxygen in the tissues anoxemia so anoxia is also called as hypoxia anoxemia is also called as hypoxemia so when we say hypoxemia or anoxemia it is a lack of oxygen in the blood anoxia hypoxia lack of oxygen in the tissue anoxemia hypoxemia it is lack of oxygen in the blood next we will go to asphyxia so asphyxia is a state of suffocation this condition is produced by prolonged interference with a sufficient supply of oxygen so asphyxia also is a state of suffocation what do you mean by suffocation the patient is actually suffocating difficulty to breathe because there is no adequate oxygen in the environment so if this state continues for certain amount of time automatically there will be less oxygen in the atmosphere in the body and it will lead to difficulty in breathing so that is called as asphyxia okay so now we have done with abnormal rhythm next we will see what to observe when taking respiration so you as a nurse when you check the respiration what all you have to check you have to check the rate of the respiration we have seen according to the age according to certain factors the rate will vary disease condition certain drugs so we have to check the rate okay so number of respiration per minute is called as rate next regularity of rhythm okay so abnormal rhythm 
or eupnea which is the normal rhythm okay so normal breathing so whether the patient is having normal breathing or any abnormal breathing that has to be checked for the patient easiness of breathing is the patient uh, you know showing any symptoms of difficulty in breathing you know if usually when you see the patient easy he will it is not even known to the patient right so he will be breathing by himself there is no difficulty so see if the patient is able to breathe easy or easy having any difficulty in breathing then if the patient patient has got difficulty in breathing we will see that there is movement of the muscles of the chest nose and abdomen so this nose will become like this flaring of nose then sternocleido muscle will push in the front because the patient is actually struggling to breathe okay he is pulling his chest muscles okay so you can see sternocleido muscle this neck muscle to the sternum to the cleido muscle you will see uh, you know that the patient is straining so that you can see whether the patient is using the abdominal muscles to breathe that you can see then position of the client do during breathing so which position is the patient sitting while breathing okay so all these we have to keep in mind when we are checking the respiration next we will go to nursing care of clients with breathing difficulty so when we say nursing care of clients with breathing difficulty so it is a subjective sensation where the patient will say i'm having difficulty in breathing breathing difficulty can be defined as subjective sensation in which the efforts of breathing reaches consciousness when it occurs there is insufficient exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide in the tissues causing tissue anoxia or cyanosis so usually it is subjective where the patient will tell and it can happen when there is you know lack of oxygen in the tissues and then the patient will be struggling to breathe it becomes more conscious for the patient to breathe usually it is not conscious right it is patient breathes by himself but here what happens voluntarily he will be breathing now he will become conscious of breathing okay so some of the causes of dyspnea so we will see what are the various causes of dyspnea that can lead to difficulty in breathing in a patient so first one atmosphere deficient of oxygen due to smoke so we can also say air pollution when the smoke increases automatically what happens atmospheric deficient of oxygen happens next psychological stress if somebody is uh, you know down with psychological problem or some anxiety tension in the patient can also lead to difficulty in breathing next you have obstruction of the air passage by fluid gases foreign bodies swelling of tissues etc okay so it can happen when there is fluid in the lungs okay then again the patient will not be able to breathe or it can be any foreign body okay aspiration of foreign body or you know any swelling of the lung tissue etc the patient will be having difficulty in breathing next we will see loss of aerating surface in the lungs due to atelectasis now what is aerating surface normally when you see the lungs the lung should be able to expand and you know expansion should happen in good way so if the patient is if his, his lungs is not able to expand then the patient will end up having because when the expansion happens very easily there is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide right so if this is not happening then the patient can end up having difficulty in breathing so in that case in which all the cases it can happen atelectasis if you see in your notes it is given atelectasis write it down there that atelectasis means lung collapse okay so usually the alveoli which is a small air sacs in the lung it will get collapsed okay so that is called as atelectasis emphysema means air sacs are damaged okay so usually fluid will go and filled in the alveoli or the air sacs okay alveoli a l v o l i and that can lead to damage okay air sacs will get damaged and then the patient will not be able to breathe next you have hemothorax anything starting with heme means blood so blood in the lung or the chest wall then we will see that the patient will have difficulty in breathing what is hemothorax it is collection of blood between the chest wall and lungs okay so that is called as 
hemothorax next pulmonary edema so this pulmonary edema is nothing but fluid collection that happens in the lungs okay so that is called as pulmonary edema pneumonia inflammation of the lung then you have pneumothorax what is pneumothorax air collection in the lungs hemothorax is the blood collection in the chest wall and lungs Pneumothorax is air collection in the lungs. Then you have pleural effusion. So what is this pleural effusion? It is a fluid between the tissues that lines the lungs and chest. So in pleural effusion, in the pleura, pleura is actually the covering of the lungs. So when there is a fluid collection, automatically it leads to difficulty in breathing that is dyspnea in the patient surgical removal of the lungs so this can happen when the patient has got cancer so one of the segment you know can be or the lobes you know lobe of a lung can be removed so in this case again it affects the expansion of the lungs leading to dyspnea so these are various causative factors where a patient can suffer with dyspnea next we will go to dysfunctioning of the respiratory center due to poisoning head injury and electric shock so as we all know i hope you remember which is the uh, respiration regulating system uh, uh, regulation uh, regulating center respiratory regulating center it is the medulla oblongata so when there is a electric shock the brain gets affected or if there is a head injury the brain gets affected okay or in case of poisoning again it can be affected where the patient will have you know uh, improper functioning of the brain that is medulla oblongata leading to dyspnea then you have dysfunctioning of the respiratory mechanism due to spasm of the respiratory muscle so sometime the respiratory muscle will not be able to function because of the spasm and that can happen because of tetanus stiffening of the muscles okay tetanus is caused by clostridium tetani and this can actually lead to you know uh, uh, it can actually lead to dyspnea how because the patient will have you know rigidity of the muscles so he will not be able to breathe then electric shock again paralysis of the muscles of respiration okay so paralysis of respiratory muscles can happen if the patient has got polio okay so these are the other causes next you have loss of oxygen carrying power of the blood due to anemia so when oxygen level has become low so this happens when hemoglobin is low in case of anemia and carbon dioxide poisoning etc so in these cases the patient can again have dyspnea okay so these are all the various factors that can lead to dyspnea i summarize it can be atmospheric deficiency of oxygen example smoke or air pollution then psychological stress then we have seen obstruction in the airway passage by fluid gases foreign bodies swelling of tissues etc then various causes that can affect the aerating surface in the lungs like atelectasis emphysema hemothorax pneumothorax pulmonary edema pneumonia pleural effusion surgical removal of the lungs then dysfunctioning of the respiratory center that is medulla oblongata which can happen because of poisoning head injury and electric shock next you have dysfunctioning of the respiratory mechanism due to spasm which can happen because of tetanus or paralysis of the lungs which can happen because of poliomyelitis then lack of oxygen carrying power of the blood due to anemia and carbon dioxide poisoning so these are the various causative factors that can lead to dyspnea okay so that uh, we'll uh, we'll carry on with the nursing care in the third video